It's here! You guys have been asking about it. Greetings and welcome to SmartwatchTix.com. Inside this Lympho box is the official Android 11 smartwatch, the LEM16. It is here and it's a beauty. Whoo, look at this. We've got a film over the screen. Got to be careful to take just the film off and not the screen protector when you take these off. And uh, yeah, it's got a completely different and interesting bezel on it. And we'll go deeper once I let you know. It's available directly from the Lympho Promotion Store on AliExpress. May have other Lympho links for you too. Check the show notes. But this is the one I got to show you. It's about 200 bucks. Of course, we could try to get you some coupon discounts off of that price as the watch itself but i highly recommend if you're going to buy it you spend an extra 20 bucks or so and pick up the little charging dock we'll show you that in a minute as well it's a 900 milliamp hour charging dock just like the 900 milliamp hour battery inside of the watch in terms of overall specs for this one it's got a lot going for it first of all it is android 11 and that's brand new now there's some goods and bads about that and we're going to look into all of that as things go on but this particular review is an introductory overview specifically for new folks who are really new to android watches uh, later in the review we'll get into more of the deeper details about what it means to be on android 11. it is a 4g um, sim capable internet accessible smart calling phone basically phone in a watch format and it's got a huge six gigabytes of working ram okay and 128 gigabytes of storage check your phone i bet you at least half of you maybe even more your phone is less capable than this particular thing is like i said 900 milliamp hour battery and a power bank with it it's got dual cameras and it is pretty much for men it says because it's a large screened watch it uh, looks good on very large arms it looks a little large on average size arms and ladies you are definitely going to get the eye with you wearing this and it's bigger than your wrist but it's what's available in android watches right now okay Let's run through the specs. It's DDR4, uh, 6 gigabytes of storage, so it should be really smooth and fast in its operation. A 1.6 inch overall screen with 400 by 400 pixel resolution. That's standard. We've seen that now for a couple of years. They got away from the AMOLED screens, a 1.39 inch, and everybody wanted something bigger, but they haven't made the AMOLED in that uh, format for a watch. So we're looking at... Um, yeah, 400 by 400 pixel screen. The cameras now, these are not your state-of-the-art cameras. They've backtracked on us and given us a 2 megapixel front-facing camera that's really just for doing video conferencing. But the reason is, with the low bandwidth, you want to have every pixel count. So they've dumbed down the front camera to give you better... Um, Facebook Live or whatever you're doing, and they basically got a simple side camera. It calls it eight me um, eight megapixel. It's actually five megapixel up up interpolated. They they talk about to eight megapixel for the actual dimensions of the pictures. Although I've been reading them as five pixels when I've taken the pictures uh, on these. Any which way, if you are looking for an Android watch before because you want to take good pictures. This is not the one. None of these Android 11 ones will be, even the Android 10 ones. If you're looking for an Android watch to take pictures with, I definitely recommend the Optimus 2. It's got a rotating camera module, 12 megapixel with a light attached to it. That is the one for photos. But if you're not into photos and you want Android 11 and you want this huge amount of storage, then this is a really good way to go, the uh, LEM16. So let's look through some of this other stuff. You've got languages for your uh, watch itself that are supported. Here are the networks. of Generally, it's a GSM watch, which means it'll work with AT&T or T-Mobile in the U.S. Although I'm hearing AT&T is getting a little dicey on the IMEI, which is the number that identifies phones and watches, and it may or may not work in your area. So make sure you check it out if you're on AT&T. T-Mobile, no problem. Works every time. 
Compatible with uh, Android and iOS, you got to download an app called GowFit, and that's the one that uh, is now the standard for Android watches. There's all these different software functions. The sports fitness is never changed for a few years now. It's still the same. It is integrated with GPS for running and walking and cycling, but other than that, it's pretty basic. The watch supports Bluetooth and Wi-Fi and GPS and heart rate and pedometer. It's basically a phone in a watch format. And the package contains all these little goodies, which we are going to take a look at right now. Inside the box, we'll save that little pocket. We've got a couple of wires. The first one here is the charging wire for um, the watch directly. Now, this attaches to the four pin connector in the back only one way I, I love to show it backwards because then you see it will work like that and it's a heavy watch but yeah it's strong enough to hold the watch on this wire nice okay and that goes into your standard usb and that's how you charge it however you could take a standard um usb to micro usb uh, connector plug that into the charging dock if you buy the extra twenty dollar charging dock with it charge this puppy up this will glow blue and when you get it fully charged take it with you then wherever you are if you need extra power because it's running low you just align the pins couple it on there it activates it charges the watch and you'll get an extra boost so really worthwhile if you're going to be using this anything longer than a few hours if you want it to last a full day take uh the charger uh, with you and purchase it when you buy it you get it for only 20 bucks inside you also have the manual and they're calling it a z40 that's the generic name brand or name of the watch that's sold by the company that makes these things and then they go to um, the what they call the brands and Limfo is one of the brands and you know this one is also made by another brand and we already reviewed it but I'm not going to talk about it in this video because it's Limfos. In the next video I will compare both of them together so you can see what the subtle differences are. They're both Z40s and it's all in Chinese and and there we have an english section here first boot and i've got a whole thing talking about first boot that i recommend you go through a complete process i got a video up on that on how to set up an android watch it applies to this android 11 as well do it you'll be happy you did especially if there's any firmware updates you want to do a thing called a factory restore in between and uh, so you don't go and start adding apps and setting your watch up with your favorite pictures until you've really done it right by charging it fully and so forth. Anyway, once you get through all of that, um, you got your SIM card installation. If you're going to use it with a SIM card, you know, it works directly with Wi-Fi. So unless you really need to be out and about, you can do everything you want to in a Wi-Fi zone. And you know you can turn your phone into a Wi-Fi hotspot, and you can be out in the middle of the desert as long as you've got cellular reception in your phone, which is always going to be stronger than your watch. You can hotspot to your watch and do everything you want to do on your watch through your phone, as long as your carrier is giving you um, hotspot capability. Yep, AT&T and T-Mobile supported as far as I know. Power function, gesture controls, basic information. You know about being able to change a round picture or an app that's got corners for menus and stuff. You can change it into a square so you can actually access the menu stuff and go back to round. Yeah, basic, basic. We cover that a lot every time we do an Android watch. That has not changed in Android 11. Same thing. More basic stuff, calendars, alarm, gallery, some of the standard apps, your file uh, transfer capability, how you move files into the watch from a computer. You can do it wirelessly, or you can do it over the wire and connect it to the computer. It'll act like a thumb drive, basically. With that kind of memory in here, you literally can use it as a thumb drive and just take your office files back and forth if you need to, or whatever you 
put normally on a thumb drive, as long as you have this connected wire or you have it connected Wi-Fi and use file transfer through the GalFit app or other apps, you can move files back and forth too. Overall settings about the watch, downloading the GalFit app. You can even use the GalFit app as a separate uh, keyboard. If you don't want to use that little tiny keyboard, you can make data entry into the watch from that app as well. Pretty, uh, pretty sophisticated. It's coming along nicely. So anyway, last thing I'm going to just show you because it's one of the subtle differences is the bezel. It's got this start power with a little U in there. That's a button. It's got back right there. It's got markings along the bezel, front camera, side camera, two buttons, You've got the speaker over here, the charging port. Did you see where the SIM goes? No. <laughs> Let's see. It's on the camera end, and I literally have to take the band off to show you. It's right there. I didn't know when we did the other review where the heck it was. I had to actually look in the manual for it. You pop that thing out. It's got a little tray. You can put the SIM in there, put the belt back on again, and you're good to go. All right. Let's uh, run it through its paces. At this point, we're going to answer the age-old question of which came first, the chicken or the egg. Do you know? Of course, it was the chicken. There can be so much more you can describe about a chicken than an egg. So which came first, the Lympho LEM16 or the other company's identical watch? Well, the other, the other company's watch came first, so it was the chicken. The other review I've put up goes into excruciating detail of a lot of aspects of this watch. So today, the egg, we're just going to describe an egg, okay? I'm going to page you through quickly so you can see all of the different functions in here. But if you want real detail about each of them, please watch the other review. In fact, if you watch the two together, you'll get nuances and insight from both of them that will give you a full round picture of all of this. Here's an opening screen from the new Lympho LEM16. Swipe down, you get this information, your power level, and uh, your SIM card, and your tethering, and date, and time, and all of that. Come over here, you have all these controls. We've talked about these. Do not disturb. Your brightness will show you that full bright is nice, like that. That's the dimmest level. Great for nighttime. And we're running it at about half right now. Location services at your GPS. You want that on if you're going to do fitness. And you also want to make sure you turn it on in the fitness app. How do you do that? Watch the other review. Here's your Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connectivity. Cellular data transfer connection if you have a SIM card. And airplane to shut all of those off. Pretty easy. Come over here. We have the system mode that you can switch out of 4G mode and into the power savings uh, low um, capability mode. It basically just does your fitness type stuff. Here you've got this pretty little cleanup thing. We still don't know what it does, but it looks nice. It is not something you're going to be really using to wipe out all your background apps or, I mean, close them all out or any of that. Uh, it's just... It's always been there, okay? <laughs> when we swipe over this way, you're going to get notifications pushed to you uh, from your phone when you're tethered to the GalFit app. You want to know about the GalFit app? We've already covered it. Here we go. This way we get to the app drawer. Going to go through that in a moment. Coming up, you're getting into your basic uh, step count information. You have your onboard music player, and nicely you can adjust the volume here to whatever level you want, and it'll play out of the watch. This is for the songs and such that you put on the watch itself. Yeah, spoiler alert. When you do that, and you put like 128 gigabytes of music, you don't have an easy way to sort through them. And I don't know of an alternative music player. If any of you do know of a music app you can install, this is an Android watch that can access and play selectively, uh, you know, by album, or you can make playlists or whatever, sort through and search by song. But for right now, when you use the music player, you don't have sorting uh, and, and uh, surfing capabilities, so it makes it really hard for me if I have a bunch of music on there to find a particular album or song. So that was everything down here. Oh, no, there's one more. There's weather. It's not set up right now. Wi-Fi tethered to your 
uh, GalFit app on the phone with a phone on Wi-Fi or cellular connection to know your location, blah, 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 blah. You'll get your weather um, information from there. So you got to have all that set up. So this is that lower tier of information. And then we went that way. Now we go this way. We've got the app drawer and one more, and you've got your overall fitness. Again, this part of the fitness is just for you to quickly get to and activate them. If you want to control and set things up, you go to the actual fitness app. We'll do that quickly. We've already done it, but I'll show you when we get there. Now, phone contacts and SMS have to do with making and receiving phone calls from the SIM card that you install here. This is not Bluetooth tethered to your phone. You cannot use any Android watch Whoops, to um, work with your phone to receive in calls or make calls from your watch through your phone. It's a standalone device. It is a separate phone, just like you can't have two phones and have one phone answer the phone call coming from your other phone unless you forward the number over. And you can do that from your phone with a SIM card in here. You could forward calls to your phone to your watch when you go out for a jog and pick them up from that phone number here. A lot of people do that. Okay. Settings is Android 11 now. So we have network and internet. This has not changed. It's basically where you can get your Wi-Fi connection. You can set up a mobile hotspot. You have your overall connected devices. That's for Bluetooth. Like if you're going to pair uh, Bluetooth headphones and stuff, you can do that in there. Apps and notifications shows you your recently opened apps. I accidentally touched SMS. You see that's right there. Here's all 33 apps. This is where now under Android 11, you have these kind of separated things, your permission manager, your default apps, you know, which browser is going to launch if something, if you click on a link somewhere uh, and it's got its own browser in here, but highly recommend you install probably Chrome if you're a Google fan, because you can set Chrome up to be um, synced with all the, with Chrome on all, all your other devices. But uh, Firefox is another nice one you can put in. Um, special app access. There's one set up for unrestricted data. That's probably Google Play services and so forth. You can see all 33 apps that are on the device there. So a little bit of tweaking going on in how Android 11 is working with your apps, your overall battery information. You can turn on battery saver. And that's there's many, many ways of trying to enhance your battery life. And uh, this is one of them, working with the battery manager overall and optimizing your apps. You want to close apps after screen lock. That is done here. And here's where you would select which ones would be closed and auto launch and so forth. So you've got that going on now. There's a thing you got to, when you look at the other one, other review, you're going to learn about optimization and has to do with closing apps after screen lock as well. So it's getting a little more complicated as the Android version increases into how you manage uh, to get things to work the way you want them to work. What we're talking about, if you're new, is if you have an app on here that needs to run in the background, like a social media app that you want to get notified if you have been contacted, but if the screen goes off, it stops the app, and so it's not listening for anything coming in, and now all of a sudden your WhatsApp or your Facebook or whatever isn't working. This is all the background stuff you got to go through to make sure that it stays active even in the background to be able to respond to you. That's what we're talking about there. Your overall display brightness level. We You saw we had just like four different levels that we could choose, but here you have a slider. So if you want to contour your brightness for a certain reason, you can actually do it in here. Um, I have another app that I like to put in called Display Brightness that's not in the Google Play Store. And watch any of my Android Watches uh, reviews and you'll see I have a little slider on the side. It's not installed on this one, but it works over everything, even the uh, watch faces. So you can contour the brightness when you go outside without even opening the watch. I really love that app. I wish they would have kept it. But I do have a copy of it. Check the show notes at the very bottom. You can go over to our resource center. Just look for display brightness and you can bring that over and install it on your watch and you can get all that. Or your phone. I do it on the phone a lot too. Okay. Screen timeout. 
You have still limited to 30 minutes. You can't go beyond that and have an always-on effect, and you can go as short as 15 seconds. This is how long it will stay on after the last touch or activity that you've done, unless the app is overriding that, and it does have the feature to allow that, like if you have a Google Maps or something up and you don't want it to shut off, you want it to continue to show the map. This is your twist your wrist to see the time. There's some bugs that have been coming out and guys if you have seen some bugs with this watch uh, the lympho guys are asking that you report it and let them know it's important to try to squash those bugs there's an entire team at fullandroidwatch.org that are working on identifying and solving these problems in firmware so you can help out a lot by going over there and checking it out in the uh, lem 16 thread uh, and of course reporting it if you see a problem that's where we've seen that that if you twist by the way if you twist your wrist to, to light the screen is not working as i understand it you go in and turn on airplane mode and then turn it back off again ah? <laughs> i don't know i don't know that's why hunting bugs is really hard i think that's anyway the the all of the t formal information is there and if we get enough um comments uh, to to really make it worthwhile to do another video of all the little nuanced bugs of Android 11. There's only two watches out with Android 11 so far, so not a big inventory. But we will let you know what those bugs are, what the workarounds are, if there are any, and uh, take it from there. All right, let's let you listen to the speaker. Here we go. Okay. That's the uh, loudest volume. Here's about half. You hear that in the background there? Well, you got to hit it just right. Here's the alarm. So that gives you a representation, and it's standard pretty much on all these Android watches. It's loud, but not super loud. There are some inexpensive Bluetooth calling watches out that are much louder, but it's not really soft either. Most of the time, you should be able to hear and talk uh, in a conversation with the speaker right here without any problem. By the way, nice that the speaker's right here. When you have this on, if you need quickly to mute what somebody's saying, you know, somebody else enters the room, you can kind of put your thumb over the speakers like that and do a manual mute without having to try to find a mute button or anything in a hurry. It's uh, really nice that they consolidate the speaker on the side as opposed to underneath or, or at the end where you just simply cannot cover it. I like that uh, change that they've made to put that on the side and put the SIM card at the top. That's really, really good. Overall storage, I'm only using 10% now of the full 128 gigabytes and I haven't loaded any apps or music or anything else. So we've got quite a bit of space. And look at this, I'm only using 2 gigabytes of my 6.1 gigabytes of actual RAM. I don't even know, I, I don't know if I could ever use 6.1. That would have to be a real crunching intensive um, game. And if I was playing a game with that level, I probably would run the, uh, the battery so hot that it would shut the watch down. So in my estimation, it's overkill, but that's what the market is after, is bigger and more RAM and storage, and it's got both on this one. Here's location services. It's telling you which apps and stuff uh, have access to it. And you can uh, set all of this stuff up, your emergency location information, um, much more advanced than it has been in the past in what you can do with your overall location services from the GPS installed. As far as I've tested, the GPS locks up pretty good. Not super fast, but it does lock up. You don't have to wait for five minutes for it. It could be dependent on your area. When you tap Google, you're getting into your Google account and all of your Google services and such. I'm going to skip all that, but that you do that on your phone, you'll see what it's going to look like on your watch. Overall system now is where you set your language and input, and here's where you have the different... Uh, uh, language selections and you can 
use the onboard on-screen keyboard or you can add to it if you want to and you can manage those keyboards here you can put in the gboard that's the google keyboard and activate the voice input from that keyboard too which a lot of people have done that's a nice uh, way of getting your voice to text uh text which is different than text to speech that's the other reverse version of it um, this is where it will speak out loud what you are want it to you can change the speech rate the pitch and um, you can even change the languages if you want to as well in here all of the stuff that you could do in your phone with google voice in text to speech you can do in android 11 now here on the watch you have date and time and it's set up so that uh, you can use the network provided time which you'll pull off of your wi-fi or your cellular and you can uh, adjust your time zone uh, information in here as well which allows you to change your region to whatever country you want and then within that country it will work with the various time zones that are available and they're getting pretty uh, esoteric in making sure they cover all the different possible time zones. What I find interesting here is, uh, look at this. You have Phoenix Mountain Time and you have Denver Mountain Time and they're different. It's even smart enough to know that Arizona does not flip-flop with Daylight Savings Time. So we're on Daylight Savings Time, but Phoenix in Mountain is on the same as Pacific. When it changes, it'll go the other way. So just to point that out, that as these watches advance, they get much more capable um, in what they can do. You can use your uh, local default, locale default, 24-hour time, all of that stuff. Nothing's really changed there. Okay, okay, we'll keep moving. After date and time, you got reset options. Remember, if you're going to set your watch up from the beginning, do a factory reset. Right when you get it, charge the watch up. Please watch the video on how to set up an Android watch. It still applies to Android 11. If you do any kind of a major firmware update, if you can afford to not, you know, to lose whatever you've installed on your watch, it's a wise practice to do a complete factory reset after you do an update. All that stuff is coming then from system. Here's about the watch that says that uh, and this is where you check for a system update. And it tells us that we are on this one running the LEM 16 version 1.1 that came out on July the 7th of 2022. If your firmware is different than that, higher or lower, be advised. You'll see something different on your watch than what you're seeing right here. Okay, enough of that. Now we go through we all of these apps again. We've looked at them in detail. Heart rate, blood oxygen, sleep, and breath training. This is all new to the Android 10 and 11 and so forth. Uh, in, and trying to give you some biometrics, some health uh, features on your watch. The basic browsers there. The camera I do want to play a little bit more with. So we're going to come in here and take a picture of my hand. And I'm going to switch around and take a picture of me. There I am. Wow, I didn't comb my hair yet. It's, uh, <laughs> it's wild when you don't expect you're going to be on camera and then you are. There I am. Now, we didn't cover all of this on the other review, so you're going to learn about it here. If I double tap, oh gosh, where my nose? Double tap. You come in a little bit more. Double tap again and you go back. Double tap. So you have two levels, and they're not that deep. Can you pinch and zoom? Yes and no. You see there, I'm with two fingers. You can pinch, but not any more than that double tap. Maybe just a little bit. No, nope, no, nope, no more than that. Pinch and zoom has been an issue. Obviously, it can recognize two points. And so some of the firmware update, and again, if you're not happy with not being able to zoom in like in your browser or whatever, uh, make sure you report that to uh, the full Android watch guys so that they can work on a firm. Gosh, that's what I look like? Ah, ah, no wonder I never look at myself. Um, oh, yeah, I, I wanted to show you some more on that. Let's get back into into the... I got to go to the gallery for that. Anyway, uh, 
check with those guys if you're noticing any anomalies or issues so they can um, make note of it and correct it. I'm going to come over here. Oh, it's a blurry picture of my hand. Sorry for that. But you get the same. Oh, look at that. You got triple zoom on this one. One, two, three. You know why? I'll show you why. Because here on your details, we've got a five megapixel um, camera image. Whereas on the other one, it's only basically 0.3, I think, 640 by 480. So pinch and zoom on this one can go deeper. And again, apologies for the fuzziness. Wow, way, way deeper. Okay, that's what I kind of expected. Um, let's do quickly another picture of the side here so you can get it a little bit better. I want to do text because sometimes you guys want to get documents and such. There, we got a picture. Going to bring it up. Going to bring it up. Going to double tap into it. And there's what we were able to see. And we can not pinch and zoom any more than that? I don't think so. No. But there we are. That's zoomed in all the way. Ah. And you can roam around. So you can basically, and I wasn't really holding super still, you, you can take pictures with the side camera of documents. And I imagine, because it's Android, you could put in Adobe Acrobat or other things that can take a picture of a document and convert it to a PDF and maybe even an editable PDF. So the fact you've got at least a 5 megapixel camera uh, over here is uh, definitely of benefit. All right, I'm just going to go through now. we got a calendar, alarm clock, music player. You can read them. Uh, the recorder's usually soft if you want to explore. I'm sorry, I get distracted. I can't help it. I want to give you guys so much. The basic recorder on these, it, it doesn't record well, and it's not a good measure of how loud the watch will perform. Install Easy Voice Recorder from the Google Play Store. Set the gain up to maybe plus 5 to plus 10 and try recording with that and play it back. And I think you'll be really surprised. If you set it, set it way up there in game, 18, I don't know how high it'll go, you can catch whispers across a room with this watch. It's really, and all of these Android watches. So don't rely on the basic recorder that's built in here for anything. Your file manager shows you we've got 128 gig on here, and it's true memory. It's not something that's been faked, like battery size often has been. You've got the actual uh, memory to work with. Weather in your area, fitness, once again, real quick, this is in the other one, but I want you to make sure you go in here, slide over once, slide over twice, and turn on, use the positioning if you want to have GPS for running, walking, and cycling. Okay, enough said. You got to have that on as well as GPS turned on when you slide down. Otherwise, you're not going to get it. A lot of people get stuck on that. Your overall desktop settings, read about that or check it out uh, in the other review. Your theme, which is the style of how your uh, stuff is going to show, I think. Yeah, I think we covered that too. Google and your Play Store. Now, Maps is curious. You get in here. I'm going to skip that. I haven't been in here yet. And uh, if I try to go to my location, I get this Google Play Services error. This is a known error, and it may affect your, be your ability to use uh, Google Maps. So, Make sure you uh, report that so the guys can work on it and try to fix it if it's work if it's happening for you as well. And you're really kind of stuck. You can't really bail out of it till you get right back to the main watch face. So Maps has got a bit of a, a glitch going on. And optimization, clean task, tap here. Make sure that's turned on, and any of your third-party apps that you need to run in the background, you have to set it up here, possibly as well as what I already showed you in settings to turn off that watch wanting to constantly close background apps to save uh, battery power. Screen lock, uh, app freeze, these are all basic stuff we've seen in Android 10. The watch face store now is the same thing as if you get and press and hold on the uh, watch faces and go all the way to the end. It's got a small selection, and they're here for all these different watches. Here's some new releases. 
Let's download one. I don't recall seeing that one. It's really quick. It's done. And now when I bail out of here, either this way or coming back and light it up, that's the new watch face we just installed. No, it's animated. And these watch faces can support complications or touch spots on here if you install some of them. Press and hold. You see I'm right at the very end. Here's where you could do a custom watch face. And here's where you can... Um, install with that plus sign goes to that same database we just looked at and quickly just to show you the stock uh, faces every one except the last one we just installed are what comes on the watch I like that one with the blue there yeah many of these are standard on uh, lympho watches we've seen them a lot yeah, but there's a there's a bunch. You got quite a, a large selection of uh, analog and digital watches. Now these ha are animated, and again on the other review we went through a lot of detail showing how this is set up and done. It's actually giving you live wallpaper. These will drain your battery a little bit more, so if you don't need them, and I don't know why, you know, the, you can hardly read the time most of the time because it's white in the, in the way that Tesseract goes bubbles does the same thing and so forth so and then there we're back to the one that we started with we'll switch over to that one for something different so that came to us from the watch face store the app store is not the google play store mind you now this is where you can install just a few things like whatsapp and facebook and then your assistant this is where you set up with the GalFit app and uh connect to the phone and then you can do all these things like control music on your phone, find your device, and overall settings. You can turn on and off an incoming ring to your phone, I think, will ring on the watch, but you can't answer it. It's not Bluetooth calling, per se. So what's the bottom line? Um, it's an Android 11 phone. It's got a huge amount of memory in it. It's got two cameras, reasonable resolution for doing video calling but not for taking high quality images that you can zoom in on uh, with the front camera the side camera nominal not great there are better ones out there but it'll get the job done and you can photograph documents and zoom in on them uh, the back is pretty much standard that little hole is usually an air pressure adjust so the sound will be properly tuned uh, to the speaker is it waterproof there's a microphone i don't know i wouldn't trust dunking it in water i'm a little goosey of uh, sweat body sweat and uh, again the speaker is on the bottom yeah, i would have put it on the side but this is kind of close where it might get water in it Give us a report back if any of you guys try swimming with it or showering with it, but I do not recommend it. I'm not sure that it, it's uh, really submersible. Most Android watches are not. Moving the SIM card up to the top and sealing it in like that is really, really good in terms of possible waterproof capability. Red diodes for blood oxygen, green diodes. Uh, I mean, it's standard Android. Uh, and it's available from... Um, the Lympho Promotion Store. And again, check the show notes. I may have other Lympho links. They're just, you know, now putting this whole thing out. So uh, we'll give you the best links we can with coupon discounts. And uh, appreciate it if you use these links because that lets them know you saw the review here. You're buying the watch through that um, decision-making process. And it helps me get more uh, newer watches for you to take a look at. Ali expresses the location you're going to with the link, and uh, this is the basic information. $199 again, about $200 for the watch itself, but my recommendation, whatever the price, with the coupon discount, you add an extra $20 bucks and make sure you get that power bank if you're planning on using this watch as one of your main go-to watches for hours at a time. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you again soon.